Hey you. So earlier someone asked me how to model this cushion type material because this is not sculpted and it's not textured. This is just traditional sub D modeling. So it's made up mostly of uh, quads and a few triangles. And my technique is basically pretty similar to Vitaly Bulgarov's technique because let's face it, he's pretty good. So I, I often try to see what or how he does things and then I try to adapt it to Blender in this case. So to do that, I have an example set up. But disclaimer, we are going to need a couple of scripts that I made for Blender. However, I do offer them for free on Gumroad. I'll link that below. There's a bunch of useful little scripts. There's actually a lot more than what I have here. I should really update this also with the thumbnail. But yeah, they're free scripts. Go get them. We're going to use them. So I was going to do this with a cube, but I think instead we'll just use a backup mesh of that same model that we have right here. So it's not as detailed, but it still be useful. So first thing we want to do is make sure we have enough geometry. So let's apply our mirror. There we go. And let's make a selection. So something like this, wherever we want that pattern to be. So well, what's necessary for this type of pattern is changing the, the orientation of all our faces. So they're more of a diamond shaped pattern. And in Blender, we can do this very easily with right click poke faces and then right click triangles to quads. And this works pretty well most of the time, but on some complex selections, you can see right here that we have a triangle where I don't really, really want it. Same over here. We have a few triangles I don't really want. So sometimes this technique doesn't always work and it works even less if you imported your mesh from different software, which leads me to believe it's just related to uh, vertex order. So I made a script that is much more reliable and it works almost 100% of the time, I think. And I called it uh, Vitaly Puck. So if you install those free scripts, you can just search for them. And if you can't find my scripts after installing them, then just make sure you enable developer extras. Where is that? Interface developer extras, because or else they will not show up here. Okay, so I'll just run the script. And it gave us that same diamond shape pattern, but it didn't select the triangles. So we're going to select those ourselves with control plus to grow the selection, but it's selection a lot more. Well, it's selecting a lot more than I want it to. So I'm going to press F9 and disable face step. So it doesn't go too far. There we go. It did miss these two triangles though. Let's click on those. Perfect. So the next step is to store our selection. And in Blender, normally we do this with vertex groups, but they can be a little bit unreliable. For instance, if I want to store these two faces in some sort of selection set, what Blender would do with vertex group is store this. So notice how the middle face is being included because it's uh, it's touching these vertices basically. So I, I decided to rely more on using materials as selection sets and it, it's worked pretty well so far. So to do this, I'm going to go to my material tab right here. I'm going to press the Z and go to material preview so that we can see our materials and I'm going to create a new one. So just click new and this is going to be our base material for the entire thing. But I need one more for my selection. So click plus, click new. Let's change this to blue and it's created, but it is not assigned yet. So click assign. And now these faces have that blue material. So at any time we can click right here, click select, and it will reselect those faces for us, just like any other uh, selection set tool. And uh, the next step is to actually bevel this. So select all of that, control B and add a bevel right here. And I'm also going to scroll up once because I want an edge in the middle. So don't make this too thick, just pretty thin, something like this. Cool. So the problem is that these faces actually have the same material as the blue faces, and I do not want that. So right after beveling, click on the base material, assign, and let's clear it. So it should look something like this. Again, let's click on the blue one, reselect those original faces, and here it gets a little bit more tricky. So make sure you install uh, my free scripts because we're going to need another one very soon. So all of those faces are selected. Control plus to grow the selection, face step off again. And here is where we need a select adjacent script. So select adjacent. I 
Don't think there's like a very straightforward way of doing this with uh, native Blender tools. I'm sure it's possible, but it's a lot easier to just install the script and use it. So run it and it's gonna select all of these little corner plots in between each blue face and some of the border as well. Now, from here, it just gets super easy. Just extrude, right click to cancel, Alt S to use shrink fatten. This is like a moving everything along its normal. So just push it in a little bit, don't go too far. Yeah, that, that's good enough. So clear our selection every time. Select the blue faces again. So you see this is coming in pretty handy because we keep reselecting these faces. So Alt S and push these out as much as you want. So if you do a little bit and let's enable our sub D's in object mode, let's press Z and go to solid. We can see that pattern is pretty much formed. So we get the little uh, extrusions in the middle and we get this cushiony look on uh, the bigger faces, but we can go as far as we want. In fact, let's visualize this in edit mode. So just keep pressing Alt S and pushing these out as much as you want. Let's disable the wireframe. You can push these out like this. Another thing you can do is press period, individual origins, and then scale this up or down. And it'll do this. It will basically tighten or, uh, or shrink those faces. Something like that. And I'll see, oh wait, that's a custom hockey. Anyway, I turned on cavity so it looks a little bit more intense. And because this is subdivision based, we can just increase our, uh, our resolution. So I added one more subdivision level and it looks something like this. So I made everything a little bit intense. So that's why it looks a little bit weird like that. But yeah, there's different ways of creating this pattern. This is just the, the adapted Vitaly Bulgarov technique, if you will. So it looked pretty slow, but if you uh, memorize the steps, it's actually pretty fast. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.